In this video, I'm going to be going over to Static Mesh Editor and see some of the different tools and features that are included with that tool to help you get to work a little bit easier with uh, your assets in Unreal. So if we open up the Content Browser and we double click a Static Mesh, it'll go ahead and open up the Static Mesh with the Static Mesh Editor. So let me zoom out here a little bit. And the Static Mesh Editor basically lets you see your static meshes. Um, but not just lets you see the static meshes, you can actually edit some attributes and some of the qualities of the static meshes. So viewport navigation is pretty standard, just like the Unreal viewport. Hold down the Alt key, use the left mouse button to orbit around the object. You can also use the, uh, the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. So we can see some information on this object, like triangles, the vertex count, how many UV channels it has, UV channels are the UV sets. The main area up here is the main toolbar. We have a save button, so if you make any changes to the object, you want to hit save when you're finished to make sure that the, the changes are saved. Then we have this find and CB button, which means find in content browser. Let me show you how that works. Let me jump back to the content browser. I'm just going to move over to another directory, just a random one, just to show you how this works. If I click on that button, what Unreal is going to do is it's going to open the content browser automatically and it's going to take me straight to the object in the static mesh editor and it's going to highlight it for me. That could be pretty useful for finding stuff. The real time button will activate anything that's uh, in real time. Say for example you have an animated texture on this object. Hitting the real time button will allow you to see the animated texture on the object. Then we have sockets. Sockets are outside the scope of this tutorial so I'm going to go ahead and skip that just for the moment. Then we have the wireframe button which allows us to see the wireframe and the triangles of the actual mesh which could be pretty useful. We also have a vertex color mode so we could see any vertex colors. I didn't export any vertex colors with this object which is why by default they're all white. We have a grid button. We also have a button that lets us see the bounds. Also the collision. If I go to wireframe mode we can clearly see the collisions this green cube object and this collision was imported with this FBX asset. We also have the ability to see uh, the pivot point of the object you can see right here and it's the same pivot point that I uh, edited and selected in Maya. We can also see the normals of the object as well as the tangents and we can see the binormals. We can also check the UVs of the object and the UVs will be here in the lower left and we can go to this UV channel button and as long as you have more than one uh, UV set, you're going to see them here in this drop down box. So let's look at the second UV set. So if you have to troubleshoot light mapping weird, you can check out the light map UVs by going to that button. So pretty useful stuff. A lot of this stuff is meant for debugging, inspecting your static mesh. We can reset the camera right there with that button. We can also check the different logs. So if we hit this button here, we'll get a drop down. I have three LODs for this object, so you'll see the base LOD, then LOD level 1, and LOD level 2. If I had four LODs or two, you'd only see two or four options in that drop-down box. Over here on the right, we have the Details panel. If I go ahead and collapse all this stuff, we have different settings and different information about the static mesh. So we have information for the base LOD which includes the materials. This object has two materials applied so we can see what materials are being used by this object. We can also change materials here so if you were to drag and drop a material from the content browser you can overwrite the material with a new selection. We've got the LOD settings here. If you remember when we first imported this in a previous video we had the ability to choose the LOD group so if we come back later we can change our minds and change the LOD group or a lot of these settings after we've imported. Then we've got some static mesh settings like the light map resolution as well as some collision parameters here. The light map resolution is pretty important. If you have a hero piece that is looking a little bit funky when you bake lighting, then you might want to increase the light map resolution to try to fix that. Sometimes this will fix um, artifacts and things like that by increasing the resolution of the light map for this specific static mesh. Then we've got the import settings here. A lot of these settings we saw in the import dialog when we first imported this object. So you have the ability to come back in the static mesh editor 
after you've imported and change your mind on some of the settings. Then we've got some navigation settings here. We're not going to go over that stuff right now. It's a little bit outside the scope of this tutorial. So let me talk more about Collision and show you one of the cool tools in the Static Mesh Editor. So up here in the main menu bar, we can see all these different menus. And we have a menu here for Collision. And this is pretty cool, what I'm about to show you here. Unreal has the ability to create Collision for an object that doesn't have it. I can also remove Collision. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the Collision from this mesh so that I can demonstrate. And what that's going to do is it just got rid of my collision. So my object uh, players can now walk right through this object. So let me go back to the collision menu and I can choose, I have quite a number of different options here. So based on the option you choose, you're gonna get different results. So let me go with uh, 6DOP, simplified collision. And if I click on that, I'm gonna get a simple box collision. So that first option ends up creating probably the simplest collision you can make for your object. So I'm going to select another option and Unreal is going to give me a warning say, hey this object's already got collision, are you sure you want to replace it? I'll hit yes. And here we have a new collision object. So this collision looks a little bit different. It's got some of these edges beveled. And what that's trying to do is it's trying to get a little bit more detailed with the collision so that it can be a little bit more accurate. And this can be pretty important, say if you have a shooter game and you have a, a multiplayer game and players are throwing grenades down the hallway and stuff. If you've got complex geometry for the hallway, say like broken down walls and stuff, you might want to have more complex uh, collision. So if we hit the auto convex collision, we get this little panel that pops up in the lower right and we have these options for max hulls and max hull uh, vertices. If I hit apply on the default options, you notice that now I get a different type of collision. Now it's a whole bunch of different colors. What this means is that the collision for our object is being made up of different pieces. In this case, we can see that there's four different objects. There's a red one, a bright green one, a darker green one, and a sort of blue one. So by doing the auto convex collision, we get more complicated collision. Now for a simple box object like this, not that useful. But for a more complicated object, it could come in really useful. So if we go up to Window, we have this um, Generate Unique UVs, which is turned off by default. So I'll click on that, and now I get a new secret little tab over here. And what this does, it allows me to create automatic UV mapping for my object. This is intended to be used for something like light mapped UVs. So if you brought in an object and it's got overlapping UVs, and overlapping UVs do not work for light mapping, then instead of going back to your 3D package like my or 3ds Max, you can go ahead and use this to create your light map UVs. You can even create a new UV channel. So I'm going to create a third UV channel. Remember I have UV channel 0 and 1 that came from Maya? I don't have UV channel 2. So what I'll do is I'll tell Unreal to create new UVs in UV channel 2. And I'm just going to leave everything at the default options. This will take some playing around. Um, the best thing to do is to kind of experiment, test out the different settings. Uh, UV mapping is one of those things where um, when you have an automatic UV tool like this and you have a complicated mesh or simple mesh, all meshes are different so you're going to get different results. So the best way to use this is to kind of experiment, test out different results. So after hitting apply, it created a new UV channel. If I look at it, this is what it looks like. And depending on what kind of mesh you have, this may be pretty useful and may work out for light map UVs. So just one of the neat little hidden tools in the Static Mesh Editor. So the Static Mesh Editor is great for troubleshooting and kind of just looking over assets and making sure that everything's good, that it's got collision, the pivot point's in the right place, uh, the UVs are there, all that kind of stuff. But you can also use the Static Mesh Editor to create collision for your objects as well as generate automatic UVs for light mapping and stuff like that.